Hello, my name is Patrick. Today we're going to build a street cone cyclone. I've already built one, but I need to build another one because I have a wood lathe and cleaning up all the shavings from that fills it up quick. So it'd be a lot faster with two than just one. Well, we're going to need a few items for this build. We're going to need a street cone. We're going to need a five gallon bucket with a lid. We need an eight foot two by four. We're going to need a couple pieces of scrap plywood to make some tin circles and uh, some PVC and some plexiglass, a little small piece of plexiglass. On this build, I'll be showing you most steps. It's pretty simple to build. I hope you stick around and watch. Let's get started. I start by roughing out two 10 inch plywood circles out of scrap plywood. Now I make them perfectly round. Now that I got my circles, I can cut the middle out and these will crush the lid and the cone will go on here. I have the scroll saw table set to 10 degrees. And now I cut a hole in the bucket lid. Let's see if that works. Okay, right here I'm going to sandwich the plywood with the lid of the bucket. I got a few screws, so I think I'll just uh, screw them to it. Pre drill for the first one. And it fits real nice on the cone. Now we can begin putting in the supports. So I'll set up my chop saw. Here I'm roughing the 2x4 to 22 inch pieces. Here I rip the 22 inch long 2x4s in half. Now I have 8 2x2s for the supports. Alright, now I got the cone sitting in the bucket to get the angle for our supports to cut our support to get the right length and whatnot we'll get the length by measuring up to the edge I'm getting 19 and a quarter 19 and a quarter to find the angle since this is lower I put this, this block here and I get my angle finder and I run that in on different sides After I'm able to I center it, it's pretty much level, and I found my angle to be 10 degrees. So I'm going to head over to the chop saw and cut these at 19 and a quarter 
at 10 degrees from short point to long point. Okay, got my chop saw set to 10 degrees. I got my marks here on both sides. I can put it in, hit the laser. Okay, now I'll cut all eight of my supports at 10 degrees, 19 and a quarter. All right, I took the lid, the, the plywood off the uh, bucket again. Now I'm able to set it on the cone here, get our supports, put those into place, and then we can screw through the plywood into the 2 by just like this. But I noticed on the bottom where it hooks the cone, right here on the cone is round, and this is square end. So I'm going to have to go over to the bandsaw and round off this corner just a little bit on all eight of them. So let me do that real quick. Alright, now that I rounded over the edges on all of them, it's just as easy as setting one in place. Putting it where you want it, getting a screw, and slamming a screw down through it. And I'll do that to seven of them. We'll leave one corner of it off. Now that I got the seven supports screwed to the plywood, leaving the eighth one removed, we can install the PVC pipe we get. But I need to put a screw down in between each one of these rubber feet to hold the top of the uh, screw, the, the wood. This is what we'll do now then. Pull it tight. Run it through, just like that. Do each one, the seven of them. We'll run the screw right down the middle of the rubber, you'll never even see it. There it is. The cone is now hooked to the supports. I don't have a hole saw, so I'm going to use this aluminum bat. I cut the end of it off and sharpened it with my grinder. So I'm going to I'm going to stick it in here. I started already. And I'm just going to continue to go all the way through. There it is. Pretty nice little hole. It's a little bit smaller than I need it to be, but I'd rather have it tight than loose. Got me a piece of PVC I found. So I'll go ahead and cut me off of a chunk of it.
PVC fits nice and tight. The baseball bat I used was a little bit smaller, so I used my knife, trimmed off just a little bit to make the, the PVC fit nice and tight. So when I put silicone around here, it'll be super duper sealed. Okay, then I went on the inside and marked where I need to cut out with the bandsaw. I'm going to do that now. Now, in order to make your shop vac fit into this hose here, not even near it, is it? I don't want to use some kind of adapter or cup link or something. So I'll do what I always do. Get my good old propane torch, heat this up, just stretch it to fit. Once you heat it up, it'll fit right over the pipe. All right. After I heated it up the first time to fit the, uh, the extension wand for the shop vac, I let it cool down, and then I heat it up again to fit the big side of the hose. So now it fits the big side. This hose slides into here, way in there. Let me see if I can get the angle right. And you can see it slides in there pretty good all the way into here and then if I'm not using the I got one hose that has two of these ends and if I'm using the regular hose that I bought for my shop vac it's got this end so I made the outside of the end fit even bigger so that end fits on there too yeah all right next step after you have your piece of PVC ready to go is to uh, go inside here you gotta put a bunch of screws on each support to keep the cone from sucking in from pre pressure so I'm going to use a bunch of these little screws do that three quarter inch I don't have an angle drill or a drill that can hardly fit in there so I'm going to try to do, like I did last on my other one, use my Dremel with a small drill bit and uh, pre-drill it. I drill about six holes per support. My drill don't fit in there, so after you get all the holes drilled, get your little short snubby screwdriver. I'm going to screw all these in. Moving on to the top. On the first one I built, I, I used plexiglass. I made this first for a template, and so I'm going to use this again. I've got this piece of plexiglass here. Uh, I'm not sure how thick it is. I'm going to say... Eighth inch or a quarter or whatever, three sixteenths probably. So I'm gonna take this, and then I'm gonna put a, a few dabs of hot glue on here. Not too much. And then I'm going to set this on here. I got a pattern bit, so I'm gonna wrap this out with a pattern bit.
All right, last piece of pipe. Approximately a foot long. We're gonna make it so it fits the hose. We're gonna do the same thing we did again. Had just enough propane left in the tank. I don't normally burn the PVC like this, but it was necessary to get it warm enough to stretch it over the shop back hose. Thank goodness. Had just enough. Alright. Screwed the bucket back on the bottom. This way. Now we'll cut this off. Also make sure to get it off and on the on the bucket. Right, cutting some notches right here. Without these cuts, the bucket lid is real hard to remove. Just like that. Alright, after you get all your screws inside the bucket. You want to install your PVC in the hole and you want to run a screw through the side right here into this support. And that pretty much holds it all by itself. And then after you get that done, then your support, your support, you're going to need to cut down shorter to fit under the PVC. And then you'll screw it to the bottom. You'll screw it to the bottom. And then you'll put all your screws on the inside in there also. And that'll be on there. That'll be done. Last thing to do is install your PVC. I mean your plexiglass. This is the kind of cone I like using with this lip. So you get your plexiglass. And it should be a tight fit. Alright. I also went ahead and got me another piece of PVC, heated it up, but I made it fit over the, over the pipe this time, then I cut it in half, and then I installed it on here to keep this piece of PVC from moving. Okay, after you get that far, you're going to want to get some silicone. I don't have any on hand here, I'll have to get some and do this later, but you can run a bead of silicone around around here all right you'll want to put a little bit of silicone around here and then where the two plywood where the two plywood pieces join together on the bucket lid you'll also want to put a nice bead of silicone around there and screw that back together and then that's it this thing's ready to be used I never did silicone my other cyclone. I never put any silicone on that one. And it works just fine. But, now that I got a second cyclone, it should be even better. I can run one cyclone to the other cyclone. Alright, I got my new cyclone and my other cyclone hooked in a line and I got I got another pipe here another hose and I I start working on my lathe here it gets a big time mess so I got all the sh all the uh, trimmings here A nice sized log that I turned down. I'm gonna turn this into a vase, but it's still kind of wet, so I leave it inside the shavings to dry nice and slow.
that was a log this size. Anyway, though, whenever I clean up the mess, my uh, first cyclone gets pretty full. So I figured if I make two cyclones, when the first one's full, it only goes into the second cyclone instead of going from the first cyclone into the shop vac and filling that up. I'd notice once the cyclone, if I only use the, the one, once it gets about three quarters of the way full, the turbulence sucks the dust up into the shop vac anyway. So, to eliminate that, I made this cyclone. Now when this one gets full, I notice it going into this one, then I know to empty the bucket. But let me show you how it works. Here's a bucket full of dust. See that? Dual cyclones. This bucket was already full, so it didn't take much to fill it up. Let me show you how full it gets when it's full. See that? Up into the cone fills up too. And when that happens, I know it's full. And I know to empty the other, both of them. Well, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this build. Hope you get out to your shop and build one of these street cone cyclones. It's very easy, just some scrap plywood, a 2x4, some screws, a little bit of PVC, small piece of plexiglass, and a bucket. You know, costing me, my total bill cost about six bucks. I bought a two by four and some screws. That's about it. The cone I, I got from a neighbor. He works for Caltrans. Other than that, you saw what I did to build it. I greatly appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. Leave a comment, like, give me a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for watching. Can you leave a comment and please subscribe? Subscribe. Thanks, thanks for watching. Can you leave a comment and please subscribe? Subscribe. Thanks, thanks for watching.